I cheated on my husband with his brother and I have no regrets. Story time. Me and my husband were high school sweethearts. We got married when we were 20 and then we had our daughter when we were 26. And then we welcomed our son a few months later. I was working a really, really successful job and we were living the life we'd always dreamed of in high school. My husband would shower me with flowers, gifts, he'd treat our kids like absolute royalty. But then over time he started to get, oh, that's not good. But over time he started to get more and more distant with us. I'd catch him on his phone secretly. And this really began to break down my trust. And that was when I discovered that he was having an affair. We did talk about this and he said that he didn't feel fulfilled in the relationship anymore and that I'd become really, really distant. But this was just because I was working so hard to provide for the family since he didn't have a job. And I'm not gonna lie, I really wanted to leave the marriage at this point, but I decided to stay for the sake of our kids. We decided that it might be good to try out couples counseling. And I'm not gonna lie, for the first few months, it really, really worked and we were back to our usual happy selves. Again, the cycle continued, he got really distant and when I confronted him about it, he confessed to having more affairs and spending nights at other women's houses. He had even had other women in our home, in our bed. What is that about? I moved him into the guest bedroom because I'm not gonna lie, I couldn't even bear to look at this man at this point. Throughout all of this, my husband's brother, Steve, became my main support network. Steve was there for us all of the time. He would pick them up for school. He would look after them. He would make tea when I was working late. This went on for two years. Two years! And at this point, my children started to call Steve dad. Me and Steve were spending a lot of time together, and I'm not gonna lie, we both absolutely loved it. We really, really clicked. So for Christmas one year, he actually booked me, my husband, and our kids a trip to Fiji. BG. Steve was desperate for me and his brother to try and fix things. However, when my husband found out, he told us to F off. Like, babe, it's Fiji. Let's just go over the free holiday. He then just outright refused to go. In the comments, is anyone else turning down a free trip to Fiji? Because I know I'm not. Then had a screaming argument about it. He was saying how he's not going away with our little brats. He called our kids brats. He said that his kids weren't his anymore and they were mistakes anyway. And I'm not gonna lie, this one really upset me and kind of threw me off a little bit. So I thought about it for a little while and realized that this trip was gonna happen, but I didn't wanna go on my own with two kids. So naturally, I asked Steve. So this is now up to date. We went on holiday a week ago. Me, Steve, and all of the kids had an absolute blast. One of the best holidays I have ever been on. And my kids had such an incredible time with Steve. It makes me so happy knowing that they're gonna grow up with a father figure like him. So on this trip, we obviously, you know, got it on. And I'm not gonna lie, I chose the wrong brother and the universe showed me the way to the right brother. But anyway, we got back this morning and I find my husband sat on the sofa. So like I said, I got home and my husband was sat on the sofa waiting for us. He was bloody fuming. He asked me why I thought it was a good idea to take his brother. And I was like, well, you weren't gonna come, so I wasn't just gonna go on my own. But he was saying that the right thing to do would have been to discard the ticket. My husband then started to get a little bit leery and he would not calm down. The only way he would relax was if Steve was to wait outside. So Steve went and sat in the car. So at the moment, I'm in my sticking up for myself era. So I asked my husband if he'd had any girls over whilst we were in Fiji. And of course he did. And then he got really, really mad at me. And then he began to question if he was even the father of our children like what he was accusing steve of actually being the father he was like they even look like him like babe your brothers they're gonna look somewhat like him so now he's forcing me to get a dna test on both of our children and after this i straight up told him that i wanted a divorce and i was actually shocked by how he reacted he got so upset not the get up and start crying upset more so the defeated he lowered his head, like really disappointed. It was at this moment that he realized how much he had messed up. And not just the relationship with me, he realized that he'd ruined part of his kid's life. And he'd also done a lot of bad things to Steve as well. He then apologized and he began begging for us to be able to work through it. And I'm not gonna lie, I really heavily considered this because I saw the guy that I'd fallen in love with in high school again. But then I stood up and realised who the fuck I was and realised there was absolutely no way in hell this man was getting another chance. 
he was begging me to make sure that he would be able to see his kids. And I said that that wasn't an issue, but it had to be on their terms. After this, I chucked my husband out the house. I booked him an Uber and I told him to go wherever he needed to go. He packed up his stuff and went really peacefully, actually. After that, I told my kids to go and unpack upstairs and just take some time to chill. And this meant that me and Steve could have a chat about how we were going to move forward. We spoke about everything that had happened on the trip and how special it was for us. And we decided that we were really gonna give it a go at dating. But we agreed that we were gonna do this once the divorce was finalized and it would also give the kids some time to readjust as well. I told the kids that they were more than welcome to see Steve whenever they wanted to, but he wouldn't be moving in with us straight away. Okay, so some little random updates. The kids have been in therapy because I thought it'd be a good idea for them to go to it. There's been a lot of big changes recently and they seem to be getting on really, really well. The DNA test came back and it proved that my husband was in fact the father and then during our divorce proceedings my husband's decided that he would like to get sole custody of the kids this being the man that called them little brats didn't want to go on holiday with us and hasn't looked after them for the past two years I am at a loss as to what to do with my 54 male wife, 51 females request. My wife and I have been married since 2001 and together since 1999. She is the most intelligent, thoughtful, caring, loyal person I know. And I've always thought of myself as fortunate to have met and married her. She is, even today, aesthetically beautiful and men have told her this throughout our marriage. She has always shot them down. Earlier this year, she was diagnosed with uterine cancer, stage one, and had a full hysterectomy. I was never concerned about the cancer. It was diagnosed early, dealt with quickly, and she made a full recovery. I took time off work to look after her after the surgery and all seemed well. There were some to be expected emotional instances on her part. And although I am not an emotional person, we dealt with them together. After her recovery, she was insistent that we start living life to the fullest and took a 10 day trip to Europe, followed by a trip to Belize. We also have a trip to the UK and Spain slash Portugal later this year. I am fine with these things, building memories memories and crossing bucket list adventures off her slash our list. I also understand that these are a result of feeling fragile on her part. She also took up yoga, swimming, and healthy cooking classes. I was fully on board until last week. Last week, she came home from work and told me she wanted a hall pass, a one-time opportunity for her to have with someone else besides me. She said that since her cancer diagnosis, her outlook on life has changed and she doesn't want to be handcuffed from doing things she wants to do. She explained that there is the this guy at her work and she has always had some attraction to him. He is leaving the company and she will never see him again. So this is the perfect opportunity to sleep with someone else. She said that I could say no, of course, but that she would quote, be mad slash disappointed at me for an undetermined amount of time and that it would be confirmation of my male toxicity and insecurity. I don't consider myself to be toxic and if not wanting your wife of 20 plus years to have sex with someone else is insecure, then I guess I'm in secure. I told her that I appreciated her talking to me about this, but approval via coercion is not approval. Yeah. I also said that I do not appreciate her language in describing my, as of yet, unknown reaction to yeah. this very large issue that could affect the rest of our marriage slash life. I got up in the morning. She basically said that she was sorry for putting such a large decision solely on my shoulders and that to help, she was taking the decision away from me. She booked a hotel near where her coworkers are having a party slash send off for this guy and she would spend the night there with him and hope that I would be here when she got back. That she would answer any questions I have about the night after it happened, but not before. She will not tell me who he is or anything about him because she knows me too well and that I would dwell and obsess over him and that it would make it, quote, too real for me. What POV is that the less I know, the better, which contradicts the offer to tell me anything I want to know after it happened. I think she knows I won't want to know slash ask anything or simply will not tell me. Part of me thinks at least she has been honest with me and she has been through a lot since finding out she had cancer. So maybe I should just let it happen. I certainly have no concept of what she went through. So I cannot dismiss how this affected her mental state slash outlook on life. Part of me wants to put my foot down and say this is not going to happen and deal with those consequences when they happen. Her best friend called me callous for even suggesting that I wouldn't let it happen because I have no idea what she went through. I find it hard to believe that she is 
okay with the possibility of throwing away 20 plus years of marriage over some guy that she has had no relationship with outside of work and that I should just call her bluffs. Maybe she thinks similarly that I won't throw away the marriage because of one encounter. I just don't know what to do. I empathize with her and then an instant later, I am angry with her. Part of me wants to know who this guy is. What does he look like? What has he got that is so enthralling to her? Is he just a safe option? Is he married? Does his wife know? Would I be a callous asshole for saying no? What can I do besides walking away? Ready for the update? Yeah. I was hoping that my opposition to her plans would give her pause, but unfortunately, that did not happen. I said I am a hard no and that I am not sure how I will feel about you if you go ahead with it. I was met once again with, quote, this is for me. It will be one time. What can I say to help you deal with it? You'll get over it. We were meant to be, regardless of the situation. All of these remarks leading up to Saturday. She left Saturday, ostensibly, to meet her co-workers, but in reality, to f*** the guy. I asked her to text me when she was leaving for the bar, and when she did, I asked her if she was really going to go through with this. After her response, quote, I'm not answering any more questions tonight. I will see you tomorrow. I blocked my wife. Good. Then, I did something either stupid or brilliant. I went to the bar where the get-together was happening. Well, not the bar, but a transit bench across the street. I waited for a long time. It was running through my mind, the leading up to this event, that I need to know who this guy was. Maybe to compare myself against him. To see what he had that I do not. It was driving me crazy not knowing who he was and what was so special about him that she would ruin our marriage for. After what seemed like an eternity, a woman that I recognized from my wife's office left the bar and got in a cab. Soon, other people started filing out and a whole group came out and people were hugging a man and shaking his hand. I assumed that I had my guy. I didn't see my wife and had a brief thought that maybe she called it off. I unblocked her and there were no messages. Everyone said their goodbyes and left. Dude was standing outside for a few minutes and then my wife came out. She looked around, took his hand and started walking away together. Of all the emotions I went through, trepidation, sadness, anger, it was disgust that really encapsulated the event for me. This guy was short, fat, and bald. All the things I cannot compete with. Ultimately, I felt like a pervert for watching from a distance. I followed until they got to the hotel and then turned around and went home. I woke up Sunday morning and put a lock on the master bedroom door. I moved her things to the spare room and left a note asking her to find other accommodations as quickly as possible. I visited another friend who was a lawyer and he gave me some sage advice and a couple of recommendations for divorce attorneys and made the introductions. My wife has been calling me numerous times since around 11 or so. One once blocked the calls go to voicemail. I listened to the first couple but felt nothing but some satisfaction when she couldn't get through to me and she was obviously becoming concerned. So didn't want to go home but I left in such a hurry that I didn't plan an overnight properly. I got home around 9 and as per my buddy's advice I recorded the interaction. I was halfway up the stairs when she came up from the family room asking what was going on. Could we talk? I thought we talked about this. I just answered with I am not interested in discussing this tonight and went to bed. After not getting a response from me through the door, she left me alone. I kind of feel like a child for not talking with her and shutting the door on her, but I just couldn't look at her. Monday, I got up and got ready for work. She was waiting for me and asked if we could discuss getting back to normal. I said, you have been doing all of the talking for the both of us for the last week. Why don't you continue and left for work? I have an appointment with the attorneys my friend recommended for this week. Am I wrong for how I responded when my husband told his brother that he's lucky his wife is mute? My sister-in-law, my husband's brother's significant other, is mute. She's been happily married to my brother-in-law for one year, and I have been married to my husband for five. We were invited to my mother-in-law's house for dinner a few days ago. I have to say, it was the weekend that I was too tired from working, looking after the kids, doing household chores, etc. But my husband insists on me being part of these weekly dinner gatherings. My brother-in-law came and brought his wife with him. We all sat at dinner and discussed many topics, and then my sister-in-law started using sign language with my brother-in-law. My husband was smirking for some reason, and then waited till they stopped, then turned to his brother and said, Man, you're lucky your wife is mute. Your house must be so peaceful and quiet all the time, right? This is a blessing. He said this while locking eyes with me. My sister-in-law was stunned. They all stared at me awkwardly, like I knew he meant to say that I was loud and noisy at home, which is not true at all. I decided to pitch in and reply with, yeah, well, she's lucky for not having a button-pushing jerk barking to bands at her all day long and gaming while she's juggling everything from childcare to household chores to work all by herself. Silence. He figured I was referring back to him, which I was, and his face went to normal, to red, to pale. He excused himself to the bathroom, then later, things were really awkward. We got in the car, and he lost it on me completely. 
He said I disrespected, badmouthed, and demeaned him in front of his family. I pointed out how he was indirectly insulting me with the you're lucky your wife's mute remark, but he called me petty and said that I took it personally and acted insensitively and rudely towards him. We got home and he went radio silent and has basically been sulking about what happened till this very hour. Am I the asshole for my response to him? Am I in the wrong for abandoning my daughter on vacation? My wife and I have always dreamed of celebrating our 40th anniversary with a luxurious vacation. Just the two of us, reliving the romance of our early years. We had it all planned out for years now and we're excited beyond words. Enter our adult daughter, Jane. Jane and her husband got wind of our plans and promptly invited themselves and their two children, nine female and five male, along. I originally put my foot down and told them that this trip was just for us, which upset her some. But my wife has a hard time saying no to Jane, as she is the youngest of our children and our only daughter, and she didn't want to hurt her feelings, so she reluctantly agreed to let him join. I wasn't thrilled about it at the time, but I wanted to make my family happy, and I knew that my wife was also okay with the idea of a family trip, even if she was heartbroken that we wouldn't get a romantic trip. We went along with it. The place we were originally going was not child-friendly, so we changed course and decided on an all-inclusive, family-friendly resort. We paid for the resort and our grandchildren's plane tickets. Jane and her husband only had to pay for their own airfare. Here's where things get complicated. As the vacation got closer, I started having a change of heart. I realized that our 40th anniversary was a once-in-a-lifetime milestone, and I wanted to honor it in a way that was true to our original plans. My wife and I might not be able to afford a trip like this again for quite some time, and it's something that we always wanted to do. So, without consulting anyone, I switched our tickets last minute to go to the romantic destination that my wife and I had originally planned for. I didn't tell Jane or her husband. I didn't even tell my wife until the day before our flight left, which was the day before Jane's flight left for their vacation. It wasn't an easy decision and I feel guilty about it, but I wanted our 40th anniversary to be a special, intimate celebration that we had always hoped for. We called Jane after we landed to tell her and she was extremely upset to say the least. She seemed to think that we were going to look after our grandkids so that she and her husband could have some alone time, and now that I abandoned her, they would have to do it all themselves. I hung up on them when my son-in-law started shouting and my wife and I enjoyed the rest of our trip. They came back the same day we did, but have not answered any of our texts, and James seems to be ignoring me. My wife told me she vastly preferred our trip to the family trip that we would have taken, but she still doesn't like how Jane is mad at us and wants me to apologize. I'm not sure that I want to after learning that Jane and her husband were using us for free babysitting and a free trip, but I feel like I should just to keep the peace. Will I be the asking out for telling stepmom to back off? Story. I have been hesitant about submitting this story because I feel like I might just be the asshole and overreacting, but I love your input in stories and would love to hear what you have to say, so here it goes. Would I be the ass cannot for telling my child stepmom to back off and let me parent when I am present? Backstory. For the past several years, my ex and I and step-parents would attend appointments, parent-teacher conferences, activities, etc. for my child together. Anytime we do, my husband takes a step back and allows my ex to be a dad in these moments and to be the one to talk, ask questions, parent our child, and do what dads do. Stepmom does not do the same. She talks over me to answer questions or give input on situations and even interfered when I was scheduling an appointment to schedule it herself for a different day. One time, my child had to be given a vaccine and was upset and afraid. I started talking to my child when, what do you know, stepmom calls my child over to her so she could talk to her instead. I was on a phone call with my child when we were saying goodbye, and my child became upset and didn't want me to hang up the phone. Next thing I know, stepmom could be heard in the background telling my child to hang up the phone and go snuggle with her. After that phone call, I emailed my ex to tell him I did not appreciate what happened, and I don't want it happening again, in much nicer terms to keep tension low. He tells me he is sorry that I didn't like what happened, but next time I need to hurry to wrap up the phone so they don't have to interfere. There's a, there's a sign. My ex and stepmom also told my child to call me by my first name rather than mom. Okay, there's another one. I immediately shut that down and told them that was unacceptable. When that happened, they decided that it was disrespectful for my child to call stepmom by her first name also. My ex frequently tells me that stepmom should be allowed every right I have because she is our child stepmom and it's no big deal. I'm going to run out of red flags tonight. Stepmom also gets upset when I volunteer in my child's classroom because it doesn't allow her to do so. I've been picking my battles the last few years because there has been a lot of tension and arguments between my ex and I, and I don't want it affecting my child. I bite my tongue on things to avoid adding more arguments. However, I think I may have been too passive and allowed things to go too far. So my question is, would I be the astronaut to tell stepmom that when we are together at events, she needs to take a back seat and allow me to be mom and stop interrupting me or interfering with my scheduling appointments or parenting my child? Candy Thunder left us some notes. Felt strongly enough about it to leave her thoughts here. Candy Thunder's notes. 
If there's one place that you have to grow a backbone and stand up for yourself, it is as your kid's mother. You have to stand up for yourself. You have to stand up for your kids. As a stepmom, I would never step on a mother's toes in that way. It is simply not my place. I am sorry you are going through this, but I think you need to make doctor's appointments, parent-teacher conferences, etc. Just you and your child's dad. Do not include bonus parents. As a parent-slash-guardian, you have the right to decide who is invited into the room. I have three sisters and two brothers. I'm the second child out of six children. I'm single if that matters. Well, in October 2002, one of my little sisters, the third child, got married. I was not asked to be a bridesmaid or to even be part of the wedding party, and it was a dagger to the heart. But I let it go, and she ended up having an amazing panel of women as her bridesmaids. Fast forward to present day 2023, my other little sister, fourth child of the family, was proposed to by her boyfriend in four years. She was proposed to in August 2023 and is set to get married in November 2023. A couple weeks go by, and I'm curious of the wedding plans. I'm so excited for my sister, so I ask her details. I ask my sister who her bridesmaids are going to be, and she names her best friend as her maid of honor, a given, my recently married sister, two of her future sister-in-laws, also a given, her boss of her current job, and a girl who she barely knows. I said, oh, okay, as my heart sank and tears filled my eyes. She replies with, we don't have another guy to walk down the aisle, so I didn't ask you. But my mind kept remembering how she has her boss and a girl that she barely knows in her wedding party. I didn't talk to her for a week or so. It really upset me. Fast forward a week. This entire situation still bothers me. So I call my sister and tell her how bothered I am that her boss and someone that she barely knows isn't in her wedding and I'm not. She was silent and then used the, we don't have enough guys excuse again. And then she proceeds to say, I know you're mad at me for not making you a bridesmaid, but I have an idea. Will you marry my boyfriend and I? Which was a nice gesture. I accepted and became ordained shortly after. A few days later, I ended up asking about the bachelorette party because I like to help with it and celebrate with my sister. I'm so excited for her to be married. Turns out, I was excluded from the invite of the bachelorette party and when I mentioned the party to my sister, she didn't respond to me. I just don't understand why I'm being excluded from everything. I like to think that we get along well. She's always been my mini me because she looks like my twin, but six years younger than me. I feel like she only asked me to be the ordained minister last minute out of feeling sorry for me and because I was upset. As time gets closer and closer to the wedding, I don't want to officiate the wedding or even go. I understand that this is her wedding and it's not about me, but I feel like there's a reason that I was never asked to be in my sister's wedding and that nobody will tell me the real reason. Am I in the wrong for not wanting to officiate or even go? Don't worry, if you were wondering if my mother pissed me off today, she did. She didn't piss me off that badly, but oh my god, I'm literally like out, all out of this. Fuck, this is like my ride or die. I live in New York right now. I don't love going back to Chicago for the holidays just because it's back to back. Like you fly home for Thanksgiving and then I go right back for fucking Christmas. So I asked my mom, I'm like, can we just do Thanksgiving in New York this year? And like you fly out here and she was like, yeah, that's completely fine. Like, okay, this is such a vibe. Like I'm so grateful because I do. Oh my God. I like can never shut the fuck up. I do have a big move coming. I want to tell you so badly. No, and I'm going to, but I'm going to be flying back and forth that I'm like, I would just like a moment to relax during the holidays because she's like, yeah, yeah, I'll come to New York. I'm like, okay, perfect. Like, this is amazing. I get a text from her today. She goes, what are you doing? As soon as I get a text from my mother that says, what are you doing? I know that she wants to call. Can you shut the fuck up? I know that she wants to call me and she wants to vent about her feelings, right? Completely fine. Calls me and vent. She's like, I'm just in a funk. I don't know what it is. Caring, loving daughter I am. I'm like, oh my God, well, like, let's think of all these things. And she's like, I really just... I think the holidays are making me sad. I'm like, why are the holidays making you sad? And she's like, you know, I just like really don't want to travel during that time. Basically, the bitch is telling me like, get your ass home, like come home for the holidays because she's sad. Now that I think about it, I'm like, did she low key gaslight me? Maybe she manipulated me a little bit into this, but I was like, oh my God, like if you feel that deeply and like you're genuinely depressed, come home for the holidays. Like I don't want you to feel that way. Soon as I'm like, no, no. I'll make the trip home for the holidays. The bitch was moved like bright as ever. Like she was like literally the happiest bitch in the world. I definitely think she called me to low key manipulate me into coming home for Thanksgiving. Mind you, yesterday on the phone, my mother is talking about my dating life. I tell her everything about my dating life and I was just like a hypothetical situation. Like if you were in my situation, what would you do? Like, she was like, well, I wouldn't have to respond any sort of way because my man now is not like that. And if you guys are new here, like my mom is fucking upset with her boyfriend like she loves to relate every single conversation back to him and just be like well let's call him brad brad would never do that like i would never be in that situation with brad it's like i get it 
but it's a hypothetical bitch like let's just play the game i did just remember the question i was asking her i was like what would you do and this because this was a dilemma i was dealing with and i was like what would you do if i'd like would just come super quick like just finish so fucking quickly and every time you were just genuinely genuinely love like annoyed and it honestly made you have like a bad attitude like what would you do and she was like well i would never experience that with brett i was like no but like what if you did like imagine if you did and she was like it just would never happen i could never put myself in that position like that would just never happen and i'm like you're no fun playing these games because you're not fucking getting it just imagine and tell me what you would do if you're in this imaginary scenario because i feel like i handled it horribly and i said i wanted to kill myself inappropriate i get it inappropriate even if it wasn't brad someone else and she was like well why would i even be with someone else when i'm with brad i'm like okay forget it you're done you're done not me literally running out of storage halfway through this does that mean like that camera's not my vibe is that like a sign from the universe you know that scene in Bridesmaids when Megan McCarthy is in the wedding dress store and she gets really sick in the bathroom and she's like, look away. This is a story about a similar situation. When I say that I'm pretty much impossible to embarrass, I'm not being cute. I'm not being like, oh, you can't embarrass me. I'm, it's because of this story. Nothing worse can happen than this. I had gone out dancing with my besties and the next day we were going to meet for a friend's birthday party on a yacht. So this is what you call the perfect storm. I hadn't slept, I was hung over, and we board this yacht. They serve us fruit and coffee on my already acidic stomach, and we're headed to Catalina, which is a small island. It takes about 40 minutes to get there. About 10 minutes in to being on open water, I start feeling fairly ill. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna head up. I was in like the lounge area where everybody was having like breakfast. I was like, I'm gonna head up to some open air. And everybody's like, that sounds like a good idea. Let's all go up. So I'm like, you sure you guys don't wanna stay down here? It's so nice down here. You, you guys don't wanna? Okay, by the time I get to the deck, my mouth is watering and I'm looking for where I'm going to throw up. So I try to sneak around the corner and I just start losing it. I am just paying the toll to the underworld like we're talking like 20 people rush over and surround me like i'm like handing out presents they're trying to comfort me hold my hair back i swear his like grandma slipped one of those seasickness bands around my wrist i'm like i'm cured i was the original look away girl but i'm not done after one particularly hard wretch i feel something knocking <laughs> at the back door and I'm like, no, no, no. I am about to double dragon on a freaking yacht. And if you have ever tried to hold in a toot while you're puking, it's like sneezing with your eyes open. It's impossible. I am in a bikini and a sundress. There is not a lot of protection. Did I mention that the guy I had a crush on was also on this yacht? And when I looked up as I was puking, we made eye contact. And if you've never made eye contact with your crush while you're sharding, you haven't even lived. We get to Catalina. I'm barely holding on to my life. And they have to lower a dinghy to take me to shore. So I went and I clogged the toilet in the public restroom on the beach. And then I went and laid in the sand and I was just so lifeless and praying for the good Lord to take me that someone called Catalina police and they had to do like a welfare check because people thought I was dead. No, so I never ended up hooking up with that guy. Nope, nope, nope. If anybody else has a story that's more embarrassing than puking and sharding while making direct eye contact with your crush on a boat with like 20 people watching, I would love to hear it.